Hello everyone and welcome back to Bumble Stitches. Um, I'm Nicola and this is Alfie and this is Floss Tube episode number 35. Today is Sunday the, what is it today Al? 8th of January and Alfie wanted to say hi because he hasn't seen you since Flossmas and he's a little bit wiggly as usual and he's going to go back with his daddy in a moment. Alfie you're going to say hi to everybody. You're going to say hi and be a good boy. There's no advents. No, and you're tired, aren't you? He's just back from his walk. So um, I'm going to put Alfie back with his daddy and then we'll get on with today's episode. So um, Alfie's gone back in with Justin to have a little nap, I think, this afternoon. And I'm back to continue with the episode. So welcome old and new subscribers. Thank you if you've joined the channel recently. And if you're coming back again, thank you for doing that. It's always a pleasure to see you here on my channel. Oh, I rushed into the lounge and now I'm a bit puffed. Um, as you can see, we're not in the conservatory again today. It's a bit chilly out there and I just thought it would be stay in the warm and keep cosy. But as I mentioned when Alfie was here, today is episode, Floss Tube episode number 35. And it's a, a regular Floss Tube episode. I've done a few um, Flossmas videos and a Flossmas recap in which I shared all my um, lovely advent gifts and I did a whip parade last week, which I know I've had some lovely comments. So I know quite a lot of you enjoyed watching that. And I did feel um, a little bit better about my amount of whips after watching Michelle um, of Mama Loves UGB's whip parade this morning. And she's racked up an impressive, I think 80 something whip. So way to go, Michelle. I think you're gonna need um, the stitching gods to help you along with that little lot but uh, it's all good fun isn't it and it's been lovely seeing all the whip parades lately okay I've got a few things to share with you today um, I've got a couple of finished objects not fully finished that you may not have seen if you didn't watch Flossmas um, I've got my whips that I've been working on this week I've got a couple of good ideas that came from you guys as a result of my whip parade so I'll be sharing um, those with you. I've got a few um, giveaway updates for you, some things that were giveaways from the Whip Parade, uh, an unclaimed prize from Flossmas and a new giveaway for today and of course from episode 34 the Let's Pretend We're at 10,000 Subscribers giveaway um, prize will be announced today and unfortunately I'm still not at 10,000 and I know it's not about the numbers but it's kind of becoming a little bit of a bete noir for me now I just think I just want to achieve that um, in my head to know that I've done it and you guys are the key so if you're watching and you haven't subscribed please do click on the subscribe button and help me get there and save my sanity because it's driving me a little bit nuts at the moment although it is first world problems, of course. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is grab my board and show you um, a couple of things that I finished during Flossmas. And as I said, if you've seen these already, if you watch Flossmas, then please skip through. But I know not everyone that watches the main Floss Tube episodes watched Flossmas. So um, one of the things that I stitched and finished was this cute little bird fill up the stockings this is part of the merry birds um, small pillow um, collection from heartstring samplery by beth twist and it's all ready to be made up into a pillow as you can see i do need to get some ffo in done um, to keep on top of things and i trying to think who it is I saw on Instagram is running an FFO, um, not a sal, but an FFO along. I believe it's it's um, Michelle from Penny's Daughter Shares and I can't think, oh I do forgive me, is it Jen? If I remember I'll pop it in the description box below but they are actually tackling their um, finished objects and getting them FFO'd so that's something that I definitely need to do. But this here has been stitched and the light's picking it up. It's on a raw silver 32 count Zweigart fabric and I used all the called for threads. So it's a really cute little stitch. It has got another three that go with it. Um, so yeah, they're, they're, that's a job for later in the year though when I'm feeling a bit more Christmassy again. So that was nice to get that completed during Flossmas. 
So I'll take him off. And another stitch that I completed during Flossmas, I just put it on my board. And this one is the Cookie Exchange, which was a mystery sale from Hands On Designs. And as you can see, that one is all done. I love, I don't enjoy back stitching, but it really brought it to life with a little um, glass dome over the pile of cookies and around the uh, mason jar with the candy canes in. A really cute little design. I'm not sure if it's still available. Um, it might be worth checking out on the Hands On Designs blog. But again, this is something I need to get finished. I used all the called for threads and I've used a 32 count uh, aqua splash. Um, I think it's a Murano, 32 count Murano even weave from Zweigart. So that was a nice little one to get finished as well. And I need to dig out my finishing supplies for that because I've got some cute little things to do a finish with. I'm not going to make that one into a pillow. So that was a couple of little um, finished stitchings that I wanted to share with you today. And moving on to what I've been stitching on in the last week since I did my whip parade, I've got... Um, I sort of made a plan. If you haven't watched my whip parade, um, please feel free to join me for that. It's the video previous to this one. Um, I went through all my whips and I kind of tried to devise a plan for 2023 so that I can tackle. I've split them into three categories. One is things that are in monthly parts or were in monthly parts, things like Prim Stitch Series, Anniversaries of the Heart, Glitter Village, those kind of things. Um, the second category is, what was the second category? Uh, the second category is priorities, so things that really do need to be stitched on sooner rather than later. And the others was, I can come back to them when I feel like it. And there were, of course, a couple that didn't make the cut and a couple that had question marks over them. So it was quite um, a good exercise for me to go through all my whips as well as fun to share them with you all. And what I've done is I've taken my um, planner. This is the Laurie Holt planner from Fat Quarter Shop. And I reused the, um, the fabric cover that I made last year for my 2022 planner. Because they're exactly the same size, so it just slips on perfectly. I did have grand plans to make another cover, but haven't got round to it yet. And I've made a note um, down the side in the notes of... I'll hold it up a bit closer so you can see... Um, because there's nothing sort of personal in here. This is purely going to be for my stitching and floss tubing and, and all the crafty things that I do. Um, so I've made a note of the projects that I want to work on during the month of January. So I've got down here Winter Rose Manor, Anniversaries of the Heart, which is um, one of the monthly things that I want to carry to commit to working on through the year. Glitter Village, because I thought mm, that needs a little bit of love. And Baby It's Cold Outside um, from Heartstring Samplery. I've popped down to choose two projects to fully finish and a car stitch and if you know me you'll know that my car stitch is something that I do at lunchtime um, Monday through Friday when I'm at work and it has to be something that I can see without magnification so um, 28 count or um, a 25 count Lugana something like that something that I can see quite easily. Um, otherwise it's not happening in 32 count and upwards I do need to use my magnifier so this week um, since my whip parade it's been a case of prim stitch series has been my lunchtime stitch in the car and I will keep that as my lunchtime stitch um, for the foreseeable future at least for the whole of January and my um, evening stitch has been winter rose manor okay so let me show you my progress on those two projects so we'll start with Winter Rose Manor, which would be the one that's underneath, wouldn't it? I'll try not to drop my board. If I do sniffle and snuffle, please excuse me. I haven't got a cold or anything nasty, but I feel that one may be on the way. So many people in my office have been off. Um, my mum's been poorly with a cold. Um, yeah, it's really doing the rounds. Okay, so here is my... Winter Rose Manor and 
I'm stitching this on 32 count x designs. It was originally in the colourway seashell but I did over dye it with some walnut crystals. And you can see I've been working on the house because this is the um, dominant part of the pattern and the plan is to get as much outlining done as possible so that it's really easy to um, you know when you come home from work and you're tired and you just you want to stitch but you don't want to think those filling areas are really handy because you can keep an eye on the TV and an eye on your stitching so that's the plan there um, I did have a little bit of a problem with the builders they put the door in and the window here and the window here um, but they made the door a little bit too big so we had to get them back in um, obviously I'm, I'm being silly um, it wasn't the builders it was me I clearly can't count I made the doorway one stitch too high and then used that as a marker for stitching the window which then knocked onto the window here um, yeah you get the picture so I had to spend um, one of my evenings precious stitching time unpicking and making it all right and making sure I was ready to proceed. So it is growing slowly, but surely. Um, I'm love, absolutely loving it and I'll be sad to put it down this week, but I do need to try and stick to my plan a little bit. Otherwise, um, I just won't achieve anything. And I know it's, you know, if I'm enjoying it, you'll say, well, just carry on stitching on it. And that's very true but I will um, keep scheduling it back in because I would like to get this complete this year if at all possible. I've got the, um, I think this is supposed to be a female cardinal in here. I'll show you the chart if you're not familiar with it. It's a design by Brenda Gervais with thy needle and thread. I'm just trying desperately, I just dropped a packet of needles on the floor. Um, as you can see, sorry, the light's glaring a little bit. So you've got the cardinal here and I think this must be the male and this I think is the female and yeah it's always a shame isn't it that the um, female birds have to be the drab ones while the guys walk around being all fancy in their in their fancy feathers but I guess that's that's nature isn't it sorry about the the light glaring um problem that I had with the with this little girl bird is that the floss that's called for um are Weeks Dye Works and it's a combination of sage and putty um, for her body and then for her wing and tail but my sage and putty were so so similar that when I stitched her there was no sort of definition between those two areas so again the frog came to visit and I had to rip it all out and I thought well what can I use to get a little bit more definition as you can see I'll pop it back up again there isn't a huge amount but I am planning to um, borrow Michelle's idea from Penny's daughter shares because she did some long stitches over the wings of her birds and it really sort of defined them. But I'll show you the floss that I chose to substitute and I'll show you the problem that I had with sage and putty. I've got the floss all on a ring here just let me gather those colours together so you can see what I mean. So that is the, that's Oscar, so that's Putty. Let me grab Sage, where are you? Sorry about this. Okay, here we go. Right, so you can see those are my, that's, um, this one is Sage here and this one is Putty. So can you see, I know, um, you know the light isn't daylight here and it isn't perfect lighting but you can see they are quite extraordinarily close to each other and that was the problem I had. So I had a rummage in my stash and I had this um, skein which was a gift from TomAndLilyCreations.com and it's their hand dyed floss and I substitute this one is Desert and I substituted this one in and it's given me just enough definition of that at least when I was stitching it I could see the difference between the wing and the body so I'm pleased with that now and it's uh, but again it was a little I hate unpicking things it seems like such a waste of stitching time and I know some people say just carry on and you can fudge it or make it work but it was really 
it really wasn't working so that is my progress on Winter Rose Manor. So let's pop that one away. And I know that quite a few people, um, I'm guessing it's because of the time of year, it is a really nice stitch for winter. It's not Christmassy, but it's still wintry. And I think there's a bit of a resurgence of that um, chart again. Okay, so over to my car stitch, which is part of my monthly stitching. Excuse me while I drape this one over the board. And this is my prim stitch series by Laurie Holt and I was on to chart number nine which is called let's grab it welcoming and cheerful and this is of course by Laurie Holt of being my bonnet and you can see I've started working on the pineapple and just the little top of the um, the shaker boxes that the bird's sitting on so I will just plod on with this one at lunch times and it's really nice, it's a nice stress buster at lunch time in the car, I can see it. And hopefully by just chipping away at it, I will get um, a finish at some point again. This year I would like to get some, I'd like to get a finish on this one so you can see the rest of it there. So there's just three more blocks to go once I've completed block nine. And I need to obviously bring these borders down and they are quite stitch intensive. I'm using um, a, I believe it's a 25 count mushroom Lugana and all the called for Orifloss flosses from the Prim collection, which I didn't have on me when I did my whip parade. And it's these. And it's a little bit of a jumble in here. So you can see I just keep them all in there and my scissors and it's just great to keep in the car. So that's what I've been stitching on this week. And next time I see you, it'll be at least a couple of weeks. So um, as I said, I'm going to move on to, I didn't mention, did I? This week I'm going to stitch on Baby It's Cold Outside as my evening stitch and Prim will be my lunchtime stitch. So we'll have a look at those as I progress. Now I mentioned that during the whip parade there were a couple of stitches that didn't make the cut things that I it's it's easy to do isn't it you start a project you're all enthusiastic about it and then as time goes on especially if it's a long time you fall out of love with that project it's not because it isn't nice or because you didn't like it you're just you're just over it so that happened with a couple of things and stay tuned because I um, offered them up for adoption and I've got some winners to announce for those but there were a couple of projects that I wasn't really sure how I was going to proceed and all of you wonderful um, stitchy friends uh, helped me out in comments and I've got a little couple of updates for you so one of those is the Jane Austen sampler from Modern Folk Embroidery which you're all familiar with and as you can see it's got the main part here and then the double alphabet at the bottom and my problem with this particular one was that I wasn't really loving the fabric I thought it was going to be a bit too big and I was a little bit over it but I didn't want to get rid of it so let me show you my progress I know you saw this on the whip parade, this is not ironed, so you can see where I'm up to. I've stitched as far as the bottom line, so I'm halfway done. I just need to complete the other half there and add the double alphabet. And more than one person actually said, well, don't worry about stitching the alphabets at the bottom. Why not just do the top portion and make it into a pillow, um, you know, a larger pillow, because it's, it's quite, I think it's a 28 count fabric. Um, as like a sofa or a chair cushion. I thought that is a really good idea because I love this design. I like the, um, the monochromatic look. This is DMC 317 that I'm using, the dark gray. And then of course, once the idea sparked, you sort of get thinking, don't you? And I thought, oh, I've got a really nice piece of fabric that will be perfect for the backing of that if it turns into a cushion, which it's going to now. And I made a project bag out of this a while ago this fabric is from Rifle Paper Company and my Anniversaries of the Heart is in a project bag made from this fabric. And I thought, well, let me just put it next to it. I know it'll be the back in, but I thought, 
what a perfect backing to make a cushion out of this. And then I was getting even more excited and thought, well, what trim would I use if I made it into a cushion? Obviously, it'll be, you know, not a cushion for sitting on, um, one for looking at and moving out of the way if you sit down, please. Um, and I thought it'd be nice to get some really nice big tassels. You know, when you see really nice, um, luxurious um, sofa cushions with the four big tassels, one in each corner. I thought that would look really, really nice. So I think that's what I'm going to do. And there's quite a lot of choice on Amazon um, for tassels. And I searched under um, curtain trim and cushion trim and quite a lot of options came up. So I'm quite enthused now. And I think once January's out, this will be my car stitch because it is something that I can see. So thank you so much for your input on that. That has reinvigorated me to get that one done and the other project that was causing me a little bit of a problem and that one's living in my lovely bag from sue in australia and sue said she was touched that i was still using her bags well why wouldn't i they're lovely so um in here is all creatures great and small by barbara anna again apologies you saw this last week on the whip parade but here's a little refresher if you're not familiar with it and I saw um, also Michelle at Mama Loves You GB had shown this on her whip parade today as well. Um, it's a lovely, lovely piece, stunning piece. But silly me, it's a fabric issue again. Nearly everything that I don't enjoy or end up falling out of love with is down to the fabric that I'm stitching on. Um, I think I really need to invest this year and not so much in charts. Who am I kidding? Um, but fabric so that I've got more choices. And if I can find the clips again, and my super clever and lovely friend Paula sent me a message on Instagram and said, I've just finished watching your whip parade. Why don't you just stitch an extra piece of fabric along the top to give you the extra space I need, obviously to get it in my hoop. And also when framing, um, that bit could be lost at the back. And I don't know why I didn't think of it. I'm clearly not as clever as Paula is. Um, there's, I'm happy with the amount of space I've got around the rest. And there's quite a lot of fabric going this way. So it was really just the top that was causing a problem. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to find a nice piece of um, sort of calico or something like that. Just plain neutral and do a nice small stitch on my um, sewing machine. A small stitch length so it's nice and sturdy and then that one can come back into my stitching plans. So again, thank you, Paula. Thank you to everyone that commented on the whip parade. Um, you know, that's why we share, isn't it? So that we can share our ideas and our knowledge and our thoughts, and it's so, so helpful. And yeah, potentially you've saved a couple of really pretty projects from ending up um, in the cubby of doom, which is the one sort of just down here where um, the I'll get to them at some point stitching is living. So let's pop that in there. Just while I think of it, I had a question. Um, I can't remember who it was. The question was from, I do apologize. I showed a project which was the Sewing Bird by Brenda Gervais um, and they asked what chart it was from and it's this pattern here, it's called the Sewing Bird and it's from Keeper of the Pins, which is one of these little um, booklets which has got six um, lovely little charts all sewing related in. So I hope that helps. Okay, how are we doing for time? I don't want to make this video too long because you may have had enough of me um, lately. I'm just going to pause and grab some, uh, grab the giveaways, some purchases, some happy mail, and I've got a new giveaway for today. So I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, I've gathered all the things together. I had a little bit of a cough. Um, I made my eyes water, so I hope that cough has gone now so I don't want to be coughing at you. Before I get on with the um, giveaways, I just wanted to um, do a call out to Jenny Wilson, who won the Santa typeface from my Flossmas videos. So Jenny, you still haven't got in touch with me. So if you can drop me an email, if you see this, and um, the email address is in the description box below because your prize is waiting for you. 
Okay, let me move, I'm gonna pop that down there, otherwise everything's gonna slide off the table. Okay, sorry, I'm saying okay a lot, aren't I? I'm not gonna do that anymore, you can let me know. Right, so the episode 34 was my let's pretend it's 10,000 subscribers. I covered that at the beginning of this video. And I had a prize ready. I'd made a project bag absolutely ages ago in anticipation of that moment, which is here. And this was the hand stitched by me um, eat, sleep, stitch, repeat pattern from Laurie Holt. It's all Laurie Holt fabrics um, and lined with the same Laurie Holt fabrics. And with that, I also had from Fat Quarter Shop a stitch journal and some of the Be In My Bonnet library cards and some stitchy floss bitties. So that was all one prize for a lucky winner. And I did the random generator this morning and I'll pop your details up on the screen as well. And the winner of that is Creative Madness Mama. So congratulations to you. Thank you for playing along and pretending with me that I'd reach 10K. Um, I'm really looking forward to you getting your prize and I hope you enjoy it. So please drop me an email um, using the email address down below and let me know your address. I've got two more winners to announce today. And from my whip parade, as I mentioned earlier, there were a couple of projects that didn't make the cut and they have been adopted. You don't know who you are yet, but you've adopted my project, so thank you. So the first one is from Madame Chantilly and it's the um, spring tiered tray. It's a little bit dog-eared. Um, it was a PDF that I printed out. And I'll just show you the stitched piece. So it's the stitch piece and the chart, and these are all DMCs, so the winner can carry on. And it's so kind of you to um, offer to pick these up for me because I don't want to see them go to waste. And I'm waffly now, aren't I? So the winner of the springtime tiered tray is Carolyn Wynne, or Winnie, W-I-N-N-E. -N -N -E. I'll put your details up at the side of me here. So congratulations, Carolyn. You've won spring. I'll put that back in its bag so that it stays safe for you. And the other one is Sew by Row, which was by Laurie Holt. Sorry for the crimping. I've got these in bags so they kept nice and safe. And that's Sew by Row. I won't get the stitching out again. Um, and the winner of that is Nicola Powell. So congratulations, Nicola. So it ends up uh, Nicola will be stitching this in the end after all. So if you can all get in touch with me um, via email and I'll get your prizes on the way to you. Okay, so I'm pleased to have got that done. I'll just pop those down there. They're quite safe, Alfie's in the other room so you won't be nibbling on those. And the next thing, I wanted to share a couple of things. Now what have I got here? I've got quite a lot of things on this table. I've got a new giveaway for today. Um, I've got some acquisitions that I'm going to share with you first and I'm going to split them because I've got a couple of sort of quilty sewy things that I'll share at the end and I'll just whip through the um, cross stitch things. Now a couple of these I showed during Flossmas but as I said I know not all of you had time to watch Flossmas so if you've seen them apologies if you haven't then I'm going to share them now. So I treated myself to two of the Stacey Nash Primitives Animal Crackers and I've got Whittaker which is this little handsome chap here and his companion which is Paisley so absolutely adorable and these will be in my um, Christmas stitching plans for next year. Another chart that I treated myself to is Merry Christmas by Blackbird Designs and I think this one can be stitched all in DMC. They give you a conversion inside and it's stitched on, they use a 35 count. So I'll probably do a 36 count to make quite a sweet little Christmas sampler. So that joined me. Um, I had 
an enabler or a, a not a um, a cross stitch uh, logistics expert help me out. There were a couple of charts that I wanted from Brenda Gervais. Uh, website unfortunately Brenda Gervais doesn't ship internationally and I got in touch with somebody who knows who she is if she's watching thank you so much Liz and I'm going to give you a clue if you watch her floss tube um, there's some little tiny teeth marks in here in the package and it says Jonesy was here so drop me a comment if you know who it was that helped me out getting these charts um, one I've already is a whip which is the um, a cup of Christmas cheer with this Santa mug but these are some other charts that I have my eye on now this one is a witch in her garden which is a beautiful drum no plans to start these just yet just really needed to have them um, this one was kind of by accident that this was in the parcel but a lucky accident for me this is Madam Cottontail and this is the reason that I was desperate to get these charts over and I didn't want this to travel on its own this is Black Cat Sampler I'm going to take it out of the pack so you can see it I saw this um, I was googling something one day a long time ago about a year ago and this popped up on Google and it was on somebody's Pinterest I can't literally can't get it out of the pack just bear with me one second yes it was on somebody's Pinterest and I looked on it and established that it was by Brenda Gervais and then immediately spent the next probably uh, far too long um, googling everywhere to see if anyone had the chart which they didn't and at that point it wasn't on Brenda Gervais um, website either so there it is isn't it the most adorable thing? I totally fell in love with it and I was obsessed, absolutely obsessed with this chart. And I was looking on um, Brenda's website and there it was. And I thought, oh my God, it's she's got it, it's there. I think it's quite an old one. I mean, if her designs go in chronological order, I don't think this has got because if you know what I mean, so this one here in the corner has got a number and it's um, CS131. So we're obviously, and this one is CS321, quite a recent one. And I'm sure I saw a number on this somewhere. What I'm trying to say is I think this is quite an old one because it's an old sort of um, design on the, on the packaging here. But I just thought it was amazing. So I'm really, really happy to have this now. I just need to source the fabric. It calls for 30 count um, Weeks Dye Works in Onyx. Well, it's not the colour so much. It's the count because there's a template in here to make um, this Black Cat sampler into the cat shape. And obviously if the fabric is a different count, that template won't work. So I need to um, find a way of getting some 30 count. Even if I get it in a neutral and dye it, I'm happy to do that. So um, yeah, otherwise, I mean, I might have to have a look on one, two, three stitch or somewhere like that. So that was a lovely, lovely surprise. Well, not a surprise, lovely mail to receive. Another happy um, event was Justin bought me the new Blackbird Designs when the leaves fall book and he got this for Christmas Christmas for me even though I thought it was sold out everywhere he managed to get hold of a copy so really looking forward to stitching something from this book um, the next things I wanted to share with you that are cross stitch related are some goodies that have been sent to me by Fat Quarter Shop so thank you to them they're very kind to keep sending me things and it's nice that I can share some of them with you all as well. So this time round, um, cross stitch wise, I have received, I'm just gonna split these up a little bit, as I said, so that we just, okay, let's put that one there. Don't fall down. Okay, so we have got, I'm doing the okay thing again, 
This is the typeface similar to the Santa that I showed earlier that Jenny has won and this is the Rudolph version. Some of these you'll see in future giveaways. Uh, the next one is one of the Stitch Quarterlies and this is Fall is in the Air. Really, really cute. This one's got a little fox and if you can see him peeping around the tree. Adorable design. Uh, this is very timely. Paula gave me some little tart tins in my advent and she also gave me a little tiny um i think it's three and a half or four inch wooden hoop to make an ornament with and i was lamenting that i couldn't think what chart i was going to use to um fill those and now this is going to be perfect this is the cookie cutter ornaments from it's so emma and this is quite a fat booklet it's all stitched in dmc and each design finishes, I'm reading from the back, at two and a quarter by two and a quarter inches and they are round. I know they do sell these tart tins and they also sell the round sticky board to help you finish. But of course, if you go on Amazon or eBay, you can find those mini tart tins anyway. And if you want them in white, you can always get um, some spray paint on Amazon or in a hobby shop and do that yourself but they are super cute. And this would have been really handy when Winter Rose Manor was all going a bit wrong construction wise. This is the new unstitcher from Being My Bonnet, Laurie Holt. And I haven't taken it out of the packet, but I think this is going straight into my, um, into my stitching bag. It's essentially a needle with a handle which, you know, it's quite a simple concept, but you can think of the amount of time when you're unpicking and you're just trying to hold your little tiny needle. Um, you risk bending your needle, it's uncomfortable, and something as simple as this, I think it's gonna make a big difference. What it would have done to me um, if I'd have had this when I was unpicking Winter Rose Manor. So a really handy little tool. And finally, I'll take this out of the pack so you can see it. Um, there is a monthly chicken club, which is a Laurie Holt series. All her chickens that were from the cookbook range have now been released as monthly cross stitches. And this is the needle minder that matches. And he's just adorable, isn't he? So a lovely enamel needle minder. So thank you Fat Quarter Shop for sending those. This, as I said, is a godsend and to have those um, cookie cutter ornament patterns is very timely. If you're in the UK and you want to get your hands on some of the Fat Quarter Shop and Laurie Holt goodies, um, I can think of a few shops that spring to mind that do carry, if not the full range, but some, and some of them will also be happy to order in for you. Um, I tend to use So Hot UK, uh, the Stitchery in Dorset, and I'm trying to think if there's anywhere else that's springing to mind. Um, and that's all I can think of at the moment. But those two shops, which I will put links to in the description box, are going to be good places to go to for um, Laurie Holt and Fat Quarter Shops or Cross Stitch Charts and some of the notions as well. Okay, while we are still talking Cross Stitch, I have got a giveaway for you today. And this is, I'm gonna make it look pretty before I hold it up because I've had it flat. I was contacted by the Historical Sampler Company. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen this on my Instagram. Um, and if you don't, please feel free to follow me. I'm Bumble Stitches on Instagram as well. They contacted me and said, oh, would I be interested in um, reviewing one of their kits? And I said, yes, that would be lovely. I always um, just, for, you know just for reference I get contacted quite a lot by lots of different companies asking me to have a look at products and I turn down way more than I say yes to and the reason is because I only like to show and share things that I really like and that I think are really good um, and if I don't like them then I won't accept them so just so that you know um, this is their stocking kit they asked me to choose from their selection of kits and they have samplers, traditional, modern, all sorts of samplers. 
all kitted up for you on their website. I will put a link down below. I chose this stocking and I'm going to hold it up so you can see. This is their snowman stocking and it comes in this lovely gift bag. These are the sort of kits that you see in sort of high-end department stores like in Liberty. They have them all hanging up, that kind of thing. You know what I mean. And in here is everything you need to stitch the stocking. And I'll just briefly show you. I won't sort of... I won't show you the chart, obviously, but it's a nice, clear black and white chart. And it's all in DMC, so there's a big pre-sorted thread card with all the numbers. Uh, it doesn't have the symbols, but it does have all the numbers and a needle in there as well. There is a piece of 32 count Zweigart. Now this is Ada, but it's a 32 count and all the instructions for finishing and obviously the chart is in there as well. It doesn't include the backing or lining fabric, but I'm sure if you're like me, you've got plenty of fabric that you could choose from. Now, as I said, this is Ada and whilst it's a beautiful kit and I love the design, and I did think it'd be perfect to stitch for Enzo, Ada is really not my favorite to stitch on. So I thought instead of just keeping it hanging around here, I would let somebody enjoy it. So I'm going to be giving this kit away. Um, please be a subscriber to my channel. Please like the video and please be over 18 so that I can ask you for your address. And if you could use the word historical in your comment, as in historical sampler company, and I will choose a winner on the next video. So for the final part of the video, just a few little quilty fabric um, purchases and some goodies from Fat Quarter Shop to show you before I go. Um, again, I was uh, completely influenced by Liz from Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch. She did a um, quilt along, she did a tutorial using, um, it was like a trip around the world but instead of doing it scrappy, she used some beautiful fabric from Laundry Basket Quilts in their Noel range. And I picked up a Fat Quarter bundle. I don't think it's the full range, but as you can see, these gorgeous, gorgeous fabrics. And her quilt was so beautiful. I thought I needed to have a quilt in those fabrics. Now I'm not making a trip around the world with mine and I've got a huge piece of my favorite print for the backing. Well, it's not huge, I think it's about four yards. Um, I'll pop an image up. There's a, a pattern that I really liked on Laundry Basket Quilts website. I'll pop an image up and I think I've, apart from some background fabric, I think I've got enough patterned and backing to make this pattern here that I'm showing you now. So um, yes, that's a future quilty plan. The next thing that I received is my monthly Lori Holt Fat Quarter Club from So Hot UK. And I've showed you these before, not this particular one, I get it every month. It's a great club, you can, um, I've got a little bit of a stack going on here and there's some in the little cubbies behind um, you can join at any time and you can cancel at any time so there's no sort of limitations to it and for December um, they chose from Laurie's B plaids collection and they said we've picked the cheeriest Christmas colors for you to enjoy this holiday season and those are the fabrics that I got and it's a really nice way to build up a stash of Laurie Holt fabrics if you love them as much as I do and to get them from different ranges and sometimes things you wouldn't necessarily have chosen for yourself but when you get them you really enjoy them and they're great for obviously for quilting but for um, backing of pillows and smalls and all sorts of finishing techniques as well so I really enjoy receiving that and last but not least I received some quilting goodies from Fat Quarter Shop as well. I'm going to start with the biggest item so I can put it at the bottom and this is their blank foundation paper and this is a 12 inch pad and um, if you're familiar with foundation paper um, quilting 
it's a technique where you can follow the designs on the paper and stitch through the paper and your fabric and it gives you really accurate results and what they've done is they've decided that it would be really handy to supply the same weight of paper and um, this is the same weight of paper they use for their um, triangles on a roll I believe and it's really easy to rip out of your stitched lines out of your seams afterwards so the idea behind this is that you can um, draw your own quilt blocks basically and it's there's nothing to show inside it is literally just plain paper but it is that weight of paper so that's a new product from them they also sent a couple of quilt patterns this one is swallowtail and this one comes in a huge range of sizes you can do a table runner a throw a lap or a twin size and they give you all the fabric requirements nice and clear on the back of their patterns that's an it's so emma pattern i mentioned triangles on a roll and if you have got triangles on a roll you'll know they like to unroll once you've unpacked them um, so they've brought out these color coded um, stickers that you can put just to keep the rolls nice and tidy so if you've got quite a stash of those this is quite a handy product to have I've only got one size at the moment um, in triangles on a roll but if you haven't tried them and you do struggle with half square triangles or you want just some help with your accuracy I would really recommend those um, last couple of items is this beautiful so scrappy spools pattern from Laurie Holt I believe there's going to be a quilt along for this one so that's gorgeous this was exclusive if you bought the scrappiness is happiness book but it's been released as a standalone product that will be a future giveaway and finally a handy little notion this is the dog ear clipper template what does it say clipper tool and essentially if you as i said if you use triangles on a roll or generally with half square triangles when you've finished you end up with those little dog ears dog ears sticking out everything's got dog hairs in this house um, it's difficult to show let me hold it up with a piece of fabric behind it hopefully you can see it better does that help not really what can I show it behind does that help so as you can see at the end it's shaped perfectly you just pop it on gives you instructions on the back and you can just go along with your rotary cutter following the line here and just trim off those little pesky dog ears so I think I've worn myself out now talking um, but hopefully you found today's episode enjoyable um, congratulations to our winners don't forget to enter for the historical sampler company stocking kit if you're interested in that and I hope you all have a lovely couple of weeks stitching and sewing and I will see you all soon take care